until we reach the top, and then at last, at the top, everybody, everybody now and then is being served again as the base of the food chain. So let's go back to the first picture of the ecosystem. And I want to try, I, I try to map the Phosphor G community on top of that picture. So first of all, I detected we have two stakeholders, two living organisms, which are developers, of course, because that's what we all are. And we have users using the things the developers are making, are creating. But there's more than that. You have also researchers. Because in open source, it's about vision, about future. And we do research about technology. And researchers are working together with developers. Because researchers have an algorithm and the developers are producing the most efficient algorithm of, um, of it. And then this stuff is being used by solution providers who are presenting these solutions to the users. And we have a lot of stuff in the open source community that can be reused. So we have integration providers integrating all this nice real stuff into working things that users can consume. So this is the first idea. It's more complex than that, but that, that's, that's enough for today. Um, the question I want to ask here is, how does that come? What are the driving forces behind that mechanism? And this is what I investigated a little bit. So the first thing I did, oh, there is a very nice presentation uh, given by just uh, Van der Brucke, how to get rich and save the planet with open source. So this was a very intriguing title and I wanted to, to know a little bit about that. So there we go. And when he prepared his presentation, his friends were already saying, okay, creating software, giving it away for free. How is that possible? They didn't understand. So he gave a presentation out of that and I tried to build further on that presentation. So what I did was look how others do business. And I searched on the, net, on the, on the internet for the business model of Esri. And there's a clear statement about Esri, the core business is creating and distributing propriety GS. Leaving away propriety, this is what we all do, isn't it? And then they have sales to sell products using their own sales staff. They have support. Until there, I can follow everything. And then there are some strange things. They have a geographical strategy. They have direct sales through account managers, business partners, technical sales engineers in the US. And then outside of the US, in the rest of the world, they have international distributors and they have plenty of business partners. Okay, strange. I don't understand that part, but the first part I understand. So the next thing I tried was to map that business, that, um, business model onto the ecosystem. So they talk about users, and then on top of the users you have the authorized business partners, the international distributors, the sales staff, and then you have Jack. Okay, so back to the question, how to get rich and save the planet with open source? Yeah, before we can delve into that, I want to tell some things about open source business models. This is a, a graphic design from Cascados, a project, a European project. I'm not going to tell you all about that. I'm just going to summarize for those who know how to do business with open source. So this is the value model of a, of a, of a software chain. And um, there are different models that we can use. You have dual licensing, which you can use if you have control over the development part. If you are the owner of the software, then you can make it open as open source and you can sell it as proprietary software. 
uh, not as proprietary software, sorry, as, as uh, licensed software. Big difference. Another model is, well, support selling. Most of us are doing support selling. So you are an expert in one or other technology and you specialize in training or in support. You don't need to be bothering about ownership of, or whatever. Another model is a platform provider. For to be a platform provider, well, you concentrate on packaging. You make sure that all the objects that you use, all the, all the things from the open source community, work together with the right releases into products that can be reused. And it helps if you are in control about the development also. Another model uh, is consulting. I'm going to be a little bit faster here because this is not the purpose. Accessorizing. You have all the t-shirts of Phosphor-G. This is accessorizing. And then uh, at last you have software as a service. And you can provide services using open source and then it helps also if you have control about the development. Okay. So having said that, we can start with the real topic of this, um, of this uh, presentation. And, and there I have an observation. Some people get rich. Some examples, you have Bill Gates, Larry Ellison, Jack Dangermund. Other people were rich, like Steve Jobs. Come back to that later. What do they have in common? Well, back to the business model of Esri. Okay, what is one thing that is particular is they sell products and do sales and marketing. Sell products. Now I'm talking to the people of, of, of open source community, of course. Open source is about libraries. We are building tools. We are creating things. Um, there was a GNU compiler before Linux was uh, created. Uh, GeoTools was created before GeoMyas was created. So selling products is weird for people from the US Geo community. And well, we sell ours. We are consultants. We are experts. And that, that's great. But it's not sustainable enough. We should do more. And I think in the open source community, we also need recurrent funding like the people who became rich do. So a second point is, I already mentioned it, propriety. Propri propriety gives a very strong mechanism to, pro to these vendors to protect the software. Okay. I think, and there are a lot of companies in the software business protecting the software. There is even an organization called BSA, Business Software Alliance, and this is the list of companies who are a member of that, uh, of that uh, organization. And they come together to protect, to, to come up for their rights. But they are very interesting. They, they produce uh, documents and they write interesting things, many more than what I indicate here. For instance, properly, properly licensed software has a positive impact on national economic activity that is more than three times the impact of pirated, pirated software, and so on. So properly licensed software, they don't write propriety software. No, properly licensed software. Okay. So, a couple of comments on that. OSGO software is properly licensed because that's OSGO is for. Um, you only get an OSGO project if your license is, uh, is correct, if every contributor, contributor is known, if you know what the, quality, what, what the source of the, of the software is. So it's properly licensed. So, Another thing that BSA states, I didn't mention it, but it's on the previous slide. Physically, what, uh, physically protecting software by hardware dongles and whatever is a very expensive way of protecting your software. 
So one of the uh, benefits of, of that industry is maybe the, uh, the value in the protection uh, area, but I think we can better uh, focus on new features, on better software, on other things, unless than in physically protecting things. At the other hand, I think that protection, even in open source environments, is, is necessary. Because, um, but we shouldn't bother about physical protection. I think that a pure legal protection should, should be sufficient. Because it's about respect. Yeah? If, we can, uh, if we have a legal um, good license, then others should respect and pay you when they do not agree on uh, open source um, license schemes. And why is protection important? Well, that's about entrepreneurship. I think we are all coming here because, uh, well, we are looking what open source software is, or we are, pro um, we are committing an open source software. But it should be fun. It should be challenging. Open source software is um, innovative, is um, in many ways um, uh, creating new innovations. Um, it's, it's the basis to, of the future of, um, uh, to, to save the world. There are different projects going on in environmental, um, uh, environmental challenges that, ha that we have to, to cover. And it's very hard work. And I think that if we want more entrepreneurs enter into that market, then protection is the key. We should have a way to protect their ideas, to claim their respect if others don't um, respect it, uh, to, com to be able to compete with the closed source uh, propriety business uh, that's around there. Um, how can we do that? Well, I think we should work together. Um, very nice picture from the film Nemo, where all the little fishes uh, forms a very big fish. I think that's something that we have to work on, and that's why we are here, to talk to each other, to, to form alliances, to, to have better projects, to don't re re reinvent the wheel again, work together, and try to bring all the software pieces together in, into um, better software. And we should do that in, in balance. Um, I think that um, we should find a balance between protection and flexibility. One of the big advantages of, of um, open source software is its flexibility, interoperability. So I think that um, we should build in protection mechanisms so that we can create sustainable systems that can save the planet. It was already mentioned by the previous speaker, I think IPR is a protection that is very strong, but that should be sufficient. When I um, look at systems like Microsoft or whatever, they have control over your hardware, from the operating system to the end user product, to the office application. We talked about free and open source software, free in the way of being free, uh, being in control about your hardware, being in control about your algorithms. I think this F for freedom is very important. I think IPR, IPR as a protection scheme should be sufficient to, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to create that um, so that new open softwares can, um, can be Okay, so the idea is that um, it can be interesting to have closed source systems on top of open source uh, software stacks. And giving that the opportunity for new ventures to protect themselves for a certain amount of time. Not like Microsoft, not like Esri, which have 40 years of protection and you can't beat them almost anymore. We can if you work together. One company can't do that, but to, together you can do that. But we don't um, may allow to make the same um, uh, fault again. We have to 
protect the upper layer, and when that solution becomes strong enough and the protection is in that way interesting that they have created a new venture, others can make it open source again and you can, uh, you can create a new layer on top of it. So that's, that's the whole idea. Okay, so in the last five minutes I want to um, use this as an example about Geomayas uh, has done that, uh, the Geomayas community has, uh, has done that and is continuing doing that. So, back to the first picture. Um, the GeoMyas community as an ecosystem. Well, we've, we've created, um, okay, this is all the stakeholders I mentioned before. And then we created the commercial organization, GeoSpark, which is here on boot S1, and who is responsible for the com commercialization of things coming out of that GeoMyas community but very important working together also with other communities. Okay, one use case. A researcher has a new very good ID. You should protect him, so he should be able to protect his IPR. What we did at Geospark is give, if he uses um, software, that we own, that we can license, or that we can license through partnerships with other um, communities, this researcher can be um, create a protected algorithm into a, into a closed source solution. With that solution, he can valorize his ID into the market going to a solution partner. The solution partner can use that value, but if he wants to use that value on top of open source, well, he has also have to protect the IP of his additions. And therefore, he should pay a commercial license to um, GeoSpark in this case. Having that protection, the solution partner can sell his solution to users and sell it to integration partners using it in other solutions. And this gives the solution partner the ability to grow, not becoming an Azure, not becoming a Microsoft, but as sufficient to invest in that venture. Integration partners can go to users creating integrated solutions. They need experts. Well, a second thing that we do at GeoSpark is providing the experts. We are not providing them all by ourselves, therefore we are too small as a company, but we are uh, committing developers from the community, paying them um, and reselling them to the integration partners so that we have a, a working community. And then the integration partners are creating systems, solid systems, sustainable systems, and they need support. So we provide support level agreements to the end users for which they pay GeoSpark. Oops. And GeoSpark well, uses uh, and reinvests um, a lot of money back into the community. So this, was, um, this is one use case, one example of how you can create a sustainable business ecosystem with open source. And I think, to conclude, there are three, three important things. We should sell products. Protection is important through licenses. And we should bundle commercial effort to, be, um, uh, to have a bigger fist against the propriety industry of today. Thank you for your attention. Okay. 
So the question is, uh, you started at research, what, what should a researcher do? Well, um, depending on what, what research you do, but many research um, uh, involves also algorithms. And you have, you have two possibilities. You can publish everything and make it open. Um, but one of the key points is you have to valorize your results. And if you want to have the possibility to valorize your results, it's not always good to make everything open. You should protect some things. If you want to protect some things, you need proprietary software to do that. We provide a developer license um, uh, um, so um, that you... Mm -hmm. it works afterwards, but I don't get the, the well you can publish um, you can publish the content of your research but you are not obliged to uh, to publish an algorithm and many many times you you create also an algorithm to prove what you've did so you can uh, publish the results of your PhD and then you can you can hire a developer eh? yeah. because it's it's always a project um, right, but you don't know in advance as a researcher whether that can that you, whether your algorithm will valorize or not no it's that really difficult to predict it's it's difficult to predict that's why so we should we should uh, protect everything just well and that's why a developer license is really very cheap so but it gives you the opportunity to don't open the soft the so if you use open source software in many cases, um, but there are two types of licenses. But uh, you have um, uh, licenses like Apache, BSD, and then you can do whatever you want to. You have also other uh, licenses like AGPL or GPL, where you have more possibilities to, to create business with. What we want to do is to uh, use GPL licenses so that we can create the business so that we can earn money so that we can reinvest in LGPL projects and for instance for a researcher um, we want to provide very cheap developer licenses so that it's uh, th so that you can protect as long as needed the things that you have created and then you have the choice or you create or you make it in a commercial uh, project and then it can evolve um, uh, migrate to another level, or you say, okay, it was uh, an idea, it was a PhD, but it's not of any commercial value until today, then you are obliged to give it back to the community, or you have to keep paying that, that low license, but you don't want to do that, so you give it back to the community. So that's, that's the whole idea. Is this uh, an answer to your question? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you.